Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. And a breaking news update, a mother and daughter found dead in Mission Hills after a raging fire ripped through their home. I'm Jason Martinez. I'm Virginia Cha. The neighbors watched in fear as part of the roof collapsed. The flames were shooting through the windows. 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala is live with the neighbors who say the women who lived in that home shouldn't have been alone. Mimi? Yeah, guys, a lot of the neighbors here on Fort Stockton Drive didn't know the two older women very well, but they are heartbroken that they did not make it out alive. But they say the older mother and daughter duo shouldn't have been living alone because they both had health issues that limited their mobility. One was even bedridden. And officials say the home was really cluttered, making the firefight difficult. Now terrified neighbors poured into the streets this morning and watched in fear as the roof of the home just collapsed. They didn't even see anyone come out of the house, and that's what really worried them. Neighbor Nancy Fontana lives right next door. She woke up to the smell of smoke around and noise at 5 a.m., then saw the flames quickly rip through that house. We saw the flames coming out the back, so I ran to the, come out the front to um, knock on the door and tell them the back of their house was on fire. Well, the front of the house was fully involved. The Parkinson's daughter couldn't have carried her bedridden mom out. I mean, we'd see them. And um, it was too late to even get to their door. Now, a lot of these homes here are very old. We're told this one was about 100 years old and all wood causing that fire to spread really quickly. But right now, investigators are really just trying to find out what exactly caused this fire to start. We are keeping an eye on this investigation and we'll let you know as soon as we know. For now, reporting live in Mission Hills, Mimi, I'll call us 10 News. All right, Mimi, thank you. And a breaking news update, only 10 News has video of this rather embarrassing takedown here. A man stuck in the fence with officers kind of looking on there, and police say it all started when the man bashed another man in the head with a rock. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Stop. Caught dangling from a fence, it all started when the man in the red hoodie walked up and randomly attacked a man with a rock, his head bashed and bloodied. A witness says after the beating, the man with the rock took off running. I saw like three cop cars like go full speed, no lights, right towards his way. I was kind of scared. He made his getaway running through intersections trying to shake the police. Officers eventually spotted him behind a fence. I heard some cops screaming once I walked up here. Didn't really see much going on. Kind of scared me. He couldn't get away from cops and a police dog, and apparently he couldn't escape the fence either. And then I, I looked over and I saw the dude hung up on the fence like. <laughs> Climbing up the fence was the easy part but he needed help getting down. Yanking him down, ruining his jeans as they break him free from the spikes of the fence. Now he'll get familiar with another set of bars in jail. Cops like dragging him over pretty hardcore. Like, I mean, obviously they had to do what they had to do, but they were pulling him down hard. But he was obviously breaking the law and yeah, he paid the price. And so the man, as you see, he was taken to jail, ripped off of that thing there. And they, they still don't know exactly why. Uh, he was attacking that man with the rock. They are looking into that. We'll also check into the man who was hit in the head with that rock. We'll let you know how he's doing. He is charged with assault with a deadly weapon. Mm. Happening today, crews are checking water at San Diego schools to make sure it's safe. Penn News reporter Mary McKenzie live in Choice View to show us what dangers could be lurking in that water. Mary? Virginia, lead, of course, is the major concern here, but it's also copper, bacteria, and a number of harmful chemicals that could be in the water at area schools. So the testing started here this morning at Horton Elementary, where researchers <coughs> took samples from four water fountains and the school cafeteria. 
The district will test five different schools per day until they have taken samples from roughly 200 district buildings. The timeline for the tests had to be accelerated. It has to be done when a school is in session, so uh, water is you know, being used in a normal way. So if we were to go the entire summer, we'd have to you know, wait three months before we could go in and test. The testing has strict protocols. Each sample location is predetermined on each campus, and the water has to be shut off for six hours prior to the test. That testing will all be done in the early morning hours so that it does not disrupt school. Now, coming up at 1130, hear what keeps the school board president up at night. Believe it or not, it's not the money to pay for all of this. We'll also explain the timeline for the results of these tests and how you can find out the levels in your child's school. Again, coming up at 1130. We're live in Choice View. Mary McKenzie, 10 News. Thank you, Mary. We know a lot of you have questions about these results and what to do about testing water at your child's school. Well, the State Water Board has some answers, and we have a link on 10news.com. You can also go there to get the results when they're posted. And a breaking news update now. The pilot who made a hard landing in Whittier was actually headed from Temecula to San Diego. We first brought you the story last night at 11. Police arrested Daryl Roberts in the parking lot of a Michael Coors distribution center. Police say he ended up there when his plane ran out of fuel. Roberts was alone in the plane and was not hurt. He's being held in lieu of $1,000 bail. Happening today, the trial starts for a college student who nearly killed a San Diegan. Stephen Jones accused of opening fire on the Northern Uni uh, Arizona University campus back in 2015. Three people were hurt, including San Diegan Nick Prado. The fourth person, his friend, was killed. Prado spoke exclusively to us last year about the whole ordeal. It's rough to think that, you know, one of my friends didn't make it out alive. Jones faces first-degree murder and aggravated assault charges. He says he did it in self-defense. Now to this developing story on Capitol Hill. Today, senators are on a collision course over the Supreme Court nomination of Judge Neil Gorsuch. Capitol Hill right now, Democrats are there, and they say they have the votes to block this. In fact, California Senator Dianne Feinstein says that they are ready to stall that confirmation with a filibuster. But Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says Republicans have what's called a nuclear option. That would be to change Senate rules to lower the number of votes needed to confirm Gorsuch. Happening today, San Diegans joining in a nationwide protest for racial justice and a $15 federal minimum wage. Workers are coming together with civil rights advocates at City Hall today on the 49th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. They say economic and racial injustice is just as prevalent as it was during his 1968 speech. Happening now, a protest is underway against Congressman Duncan Hunter. The group Indivisible Fallbrook says they want an investigation into Hunter and Congressman Devin Nunes. Protesters say they're concerned about the ongoing investigations into President Trump's ties to Russia. Company